Hey guys, it's Muzzy here and welcome to another commentary. Uh, this one is game related, after my last one about Zimmerman. Um, if you haven't seen that, make sure you go check that out. This is about Ubisoft. So uh, the gameplay in the background, uh, not sure what it will be. Music is by Cruzo or Roby. And um, yeah, so I'm talking about Ubisoft's vision of next generation gaming and what they see as the next generation. So there's a good side and a bad, bad side, it says there is a good side. The bad side is that Ubisoft is like, they're coming out with a few new IPs now, but they said they're only looking at IPs that have potential to be a franchise and that they, they see becoming a franchise. There's no doubt that you're going to see Watch Dogs 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 already, like, you know that's going to happen. There's no doubt you're going to see the crew have a new release afterwards soon, as, as long as it sells well, and it probably will. That the problem with this though is that they're just re reducing the amount of they're restricting the the creativity in their in the games because they're taking the safe options. The games that are most likely to be franchises are games that they will know, they know people will like, and the type of games you know people will like aren't very risky. They don't do do much new because you you don't know what people will like and what people do like, so you will, you will use what people do like and not what people might like so they'll just be just taking old stuff and making it a bit newer and then passing it off as something completely new which it isn't so this th and this is like where um any developers coming uh, come in and how that is a lot better than all like what ubisoft and ea and activision and what they're doing but you can see why ubisoft are are doing this because it will make them a lot of money and after they're a business that want to make money. Look at Call of Duty, that's a billion, it's, more, it's worth more than a billion dollars as a franchise. If it's uh, Battlefield that make that makes EA loads and loads of money, it, they just want to make loads and loads of money. Which, to be fair, is, is perfectly fine. Because most people want to make loads and loads of money. But I don't think it's very good for the for gaming. For, for consumers as a whole, it will restrict their variety. Like people love it when there's when there's something new. Like that's why a lot of people were uh, were pointing. Uh, like Titanfall was seen as one of the best. Well, it's got one like over 60 E3 awards for the best title. That's why people were getting really excited about the order when it was uh, being announced at E3. It's why people really love The Last of Us. It was something new, and it as it wasn't it wasn't even something too different because there are so many zombie games. But it's just something new for people. Uh, but then again, people obviously seem to like the same, the same game, by buying the same game nine times. I'm guilty of that as well, because it's Call of Duty. I'll buy that every year, I probably won't buy it this year, unless it's good. But most people, people, people will buy it. Like, if there's a, let's say everyone loves, oh yeah, everyone loved Assassin's, Assassin's Creed 1. So they made another one. Assassin's Creed 2, they made another one. Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, people like that, they made another one, then they made Revelations, and then, but it's been getting worse and worse, and that's what happens with a lot of these franchises, because you make, you just like, milk all the money out of it, and so it's just a really dry game that everybody buys because of the title, and I think that's, gonna, that's what's going to happen with our games. So is that the bad thing, in this case, can also be good, but on, in short term, like, in the, like, over a long period of time, it, it will just make the market stable, and if everybody does this, which gladly isn't true, um, people won't be doing this. But another problem with uh, only having franchises is that people are beginning to realise that they can pay uh, £5, like £10, and buy an indie game which is just as fun as a, a £40 or $60 uh, AAA title. So people, I think people become more wary of what they're buying. So like people are more wary that they're buying the same Call of Duty this year that they were last year, and they're not really um, they're buying more indie games which are different to like these franchises. So I think uh, there'll be a certain audience that will buy this franchise because of the title. And there'll be another audience saying, "Well, it's got a good like it's a good franchise, but is the game any good?" So that's another problem they could run into with uh, having loads and loads of franchises. But it will make them a lot of money and uh, it can be a good thing depending on your perspective of it. But the actual good thing in Ubisoft's vision of the next generation 
is uh, like what they're doing with all their games and how they seamless, seamlessly integrate with uh, integrate the online, the like the multiplayer, the co-op, the the single player, and how it's all in a online persistent world. So look at uh, the crew, like no loading screens, and the online will be integrated in it. And in a racing game, I think that's really good because when it was first in Need for Speed, I can't remember which one it was in, maybe like Hot Pursuit or something. You could jump into an online match, or, or you could uh, you could um, play single player. But um, I think that's that's good that uh, they're taking some sort of uh, risk. It's not much of a risk because they know these people do love the open world, so uh, it's it's slightly a risk, but not really a risk. But it, I think it'll be great because um, you'll be able to like it's an online persistent world that where everything reacts to everything else. It's like in Watch Dogs if you hack a phone with something that will trigger something and cause an effect, blah blah. blah. Things will happen. Like the crew, um, it'll just it'll, it's just continuous and there's there's my favorite part about is no loading screens because I hate loading screens. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I think Ubisoft are looking at for the future, like in games of, uh, like in, in all of their games, like even Assassin's Creed, uh, The Crew, The Division, um, like all their big games, Watch Dogs as well. Everything reacts with each other, reacts with uh, everything else in the world. It's all open world, it's all uh, multiplayer, but single player as well, like at the same time. So, like, how like Borderlands does it, it's drop in, drop out, you can do wherever you want. Like, no borders to what you can do a lot more freedom and people like freedom so uh, it can be a good thing as long as they don't overdo it because you wouldn't want every game to be like that like you do like a linear game once in a while like The Witcher 2 is very linear apart from the, the, the what's it called the, it's, it's linear but you can like read all this stuff but uh, it's still one of the best games Metro Last Light is pretty linear it's still a really good game Mario is really linear <laughs> it's still a really good game so you don't want everything to be open world because a lot of the time you can take away from it. But uh, that's I think that's me for the day. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, then click the like button and uh, share the video if you liked it that much. Uh, if you want to leave your opinion in the comments, then feel free. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. Bye.